Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. Today I'm going to be talking about the books that I finished in March. I read 10 books altogether and I'm going to group them. Um, first I will talk about the BookTube Prize Octofinals and I'm going to give my rankings for Fiction Group C. I will also talk a little bit about Canada Reads. I will talk about some buddy reads and group reads and then I have uh, one kind of lonely book out there that I read just because I wanted to. So overall, um, it was a good reading month. I didn't have any horrible books uh, and I only had one five star book um, and the rest were either three or four stars. So that's not too bad. Um, so let's start with the book two prize. Um, I judged fiction group C for the Octafinals and I had read four books in February and the final two books in March, but I'm going to talk about them in the order that I ranked them. So the ranking was kind of hard actually <laughs> because I rated three of the books three stars, two books four stars, and then one of the books I'm still deciding between the three or four. So really my bottom three might even be interchangeable at any given time. Um, but in my number six spot, I put actually one of the books that I read in March, um, and that is Trust by Hernan Diaz. And this book made it through to the quarterfinals. And even though it's in my sixth spot, I'm totally fine with it. Uh, going through because there is a lot about it that I really liked. Um, there were times in this book that I zoned out and that was why I put it in sixth. Uh, it's just not a topic that I would normally be drawn to to read um, and I just I don't think I would have read it uh, on my own. So that being said I liked the structure of this book it's basically four articles or write-ups about Benjamin Rask and his wife Helen. And Benjamin is a well uh, is a Wall Street tycoon and they are super wealthy. And then the four articles give these very different perspectives of their lives. Um, and I enjoyed Helen's story and how she was portrayed by these authors. Um, I also liked how this novel used wordplay like trust as in like financial trust, but also in relational trust. Um, there's a number of times where words are used like that. Um, if it wasn't so heavily about the financial world, I probably would have loved this book, um, but that's what the book is about. So that's a me problem and not a book problem, um, which is why this is, you know, going through, I think, to the next round of um, the book two prize. Um, and it, yeah, it just, it makes sense to me. So um, in my fifth spot, I put French Braid by Anne Tyler. I was really hoping to like this book. Um, as many of you know, I have several Anne Tyler books already waiting on my shelf. And if I hadn't heard that her other books are better than this one, uh, I probably would not be eager to still read them because French Braid just did not do anything for me. Um, I read this in February and I couldn't tell you anything <laughs> about it then. Um, but that's about it. Like I actually had to go and look back at my notes to refresh my memory because I actually couldn't tell you anything about it. So this book has many things normally that I love in a book. It has family drama, um, it's multi-generational, there's some intrigue, and that's normally my thing, but I just didn't connect to this. Um, the story is about the Garrett family. Uh, Mercy, the mother, was an interesting character. I appreciated her desire for art um, and her willingness to sacrifice for it, uh, including her marriage to Robin. And then their two daughters, Alice and Lily, I think were supposed to kind of contrast each other. And then there's their son, David, who is probably the character that I empathized with the most. Um, all of the characters are flawed and that was written well. But like I said, I felt no connections to this family 
really. So it was okay, uh, but it made no impact on me since I couldn't even um, remember kind of the, the family's name. I had to look that up. So um, in my number four spot, I put Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. And I might be a little biased here because Mandel is a Canadian author. Uh, and I have enjoyed other books by her. So Sea of Tranquility uh, is not my favorite one of hers uh, that I've read, but I liked that the characters from other books are linked to this. And you don't have, you know, you don't miss anything by not reading the other books first. But I think it's if you have, then it's a nice nod to those other stories. So this book is a bit of a slow burn, I would say. It shares different characters' stories and then connects those stories and it brings them all together. Um, I'm not normally a sci-fi gal, as you know, um, but that didn't really bother me here. I'm also okay with time travel and I thought that part of the story was interesting. Um, in the end though, I wasn't enamored by the story as a whole. So I may also just not have gotten all of it because it's not my usual genre, but I couldn't put it in my top three. So the book that ended up in my third spot was surprising to me, and that was Blank Pages by Bernard uh, McLaverty. This was the first time I had really even heard of this author and read this author. Um, Blank Pages is a short story collection uh, of about, I think it's 12 stories. And of all the books so far, this is the one that had the most cohesiveness to it in some ways. It had some similar themes that the other books have, like uh, pandemics and war, loss and grief, um, parenthood, relationships. And for me, the writing in this was superior to the writing in Mandel and Tyler's work for sure. So I put this in my top three. So we already know that Trust made it into the quarterfinals and um, so did my top two books. So in my number two spot is the other book that I read in March and that is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. I really liked this book, probably the darkest book of the group, but so compelling. This story is about Miri and her wife Leah, who is a marine biologist. And Leah has gone on a deep sea mission. And the mission was supposed to last like two or three weeks, but something happens and um, she actually doesn't return for several months. And the story is told from um, alternating perspectives. So from Miri, who is waiting for her wife, and then from Leah, who uh, shares her experience in the sea. So when Leah does return, you know, everything at first seems normal enough until she begins to act very different. And one of the things that I loved most about this story is how Miri tries to understand what Leah is going through and how she loves her through it. I thought the writing was wonderful and for a debut author like I cannot wait to see um, what else she writes. Um, I will definitely be picking up whatever she puts out next um, and I've ordered a copy of this book. It's my last order from Book Depository before they close uh, because I really wanted the UK cover. I think the cover is stunning, it's gorgeous and so fitting. So that leaves my number one book which is Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart. Um, I had read this a while ago with the Up To No Good uh, book club. So I've already, you know, talked about this many times before, but I really enjoyed this book. And I think Douglas Stewart's writing is exceptional. His characters are well developed. Um, this is an emotional read as Mungo navigates his uh, relationship with James and, you know, some horrible experiences that he has. Um, because some of the men in his neighborhood um, attempt to make him more masculine and manly. Um, so if you've read uh, Shuggy Bane, which 
I absolutely loved. Then there are some similarities, especially the, uh, I would say the similarities between Mungo's relationship with his mother. Uh, this is definitely worth a read and I, I think I would have been very disappointed had it not gone into the quarterfinals. So those are my rankings and the results of the octafinals for Fiction Group C. Um, I will be judging fiction in the quarterfinals as well. I have Group B and this looks like another interesting group. Uh, I think I'm going to like some of these books and some of them are books that I'm not really aware of like The English Understa uh, Understand Wool by Helen DeWitt. Um, this is a quick read and I will be hopefully getting to it in the next couple of days. Um, there's Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez um, and I've only really learnt uh, about this book from others talking about it uh, when they've actually talked about the booktube prize. Uh, this is one that I think really interests me. And another quick read is Foster by Claire Keegan. Um, I'm hoping to like this. I have read Small Things Like These, also by Claire Keegan, which was okay for me. I didn't love it like I know many other people do, so we will see how this one goes. Uh, the next two books are my most anticipated, and that is How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Negamatsu and The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida, I hope I'm saying that right, um, by Shihan Karna Tilaka. Um, I've heard great things about both of these books. They have both been on my wish list to read, so I'm excited to, you know, have them in my group. And then the final book in the group is Now Is Not the Time to Panic by Kevin Wilson, which again, I really don't know anything about. So I'm going to uh, just hope that it will be a good one. Um, okay, in March, I read two books for the Canada Reads debates. Um, I've already talked about Canada Reads multiple times and I did a wrap up, so I will leave a link to that wrap up below in case that is something that you're interested in checking out. Um, the two books that I read in March were Ducks by Kate Beaton, and this is the winner of Canada Reads in 2023 this year. It is a graphic memoir, graphic novel memoir, of Kate Beaton's experience working in the oil sands here in Alberta. And many of you know that graphic novels are just not my thing. And if you did already watch me talk about this, um, then you know that my experience of reading this one um, in particular just was not great. But the story itself is an important one and one that is not told often or really at all. So this book does open up a lot of conversations about um, the environment, the treatment of women, and just life choices that people in uh, the maritime provinces have to make. And then the other book that I read in March for Canada Reads was Hotline by Dimitri Nasralla. I really enjoyed this book, which is about Muna, a single mother who immigrates uh, or immigrated from Lebanon to Montreal with her son. And it's how they transition to a new country and culture, uh, the sacrifices that Muna makes and the many barriers that they face trying to start a new life. Um, I also watched an interview with Dimitri Nasralla and Omar el uh, who is another author that I've talked about many times, and I thought it was very interesting. So I will link that below. Um, next, I did three buddy reads, and uh, the first was with Lindy from Lindy's Magpie Reads, and Lindy is lovely and reads a lot. She reads very diverse books and a lot of Canadian literature, and we read a Canadian book together. Um, we read Bellevue Square by Michael Redhill. I really enjoyed reading this book, and although I still don't understand all of it. <laughs> there was so much about it that was great. The story grabbed me right away. There is a sense of mystery and some really interesting foreshadowing. Uh, the main character is Jean Mason 
and people start telling her that they have you know seen her or someone that looks like her and it turns out that Jean has a doppelganger and she becomes obsessed with finding her doppelganger and then starts following her and I loved that this takes place in Toronto because I am familiar with with it and many of the places I could imagine, you know, being there. Um, at some point, I started questioning what was real. Jean's character becomes more complex. And the way mental illness is brought into this story, I think, is very unique. Uh, my favorite part, though, was the writing. It is fantastic. I love how it flowed. I love how humor was brought into the story. Uh, there are, I'd say, some really great one-liners. And this is a dark story, and it doesn't all wrap up neatly in the end. Um, it left me with more questions than answers, probably. But I was okay with that. I was just so grateful to um, be reading this with Lindy. And I want to definitely read more by this author. My next buddy read was with Kristen at Enter the Book, and we read The Pearl by John Steinbeck. This was a reread for Kristen, but I hadn't I hadn't read this before. I've only read a couple of Steinbecks. Um, it's a very quick read and a very sad read. I wasn't expecting it to be so sad. Um, this story is based on a Mexican folktale. Kino is the main character. Um, and he's a husband, father, and a diver. And the family is very poor. And right from the beginning, we are aware of like looming danger as a scorpion stings Kino's baby. And one day Kino finds a large pearl. And this pearl is seen to be the answer to all of Kino's problems. And the villagers find out about the pearl and become jealous. Uh, everyone, including Kino, they become kind of obsessed with this pearl and what Kino will do with it. And the story is about um, greed and jealousy. And it, even though it's a simple story, it just it has a profound message. And then my final buddy read um, in March was for March of the Mammoths. And um, I read this with Sonia Devaney, who is a friend and booktube supporter. And we read A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. And this book, uh, this book has been on my shelf for a long time. And I knew that it would be a crushing read, which is really an understatement. So I was grateful to have someone to read with because oh, this book is just it's an emotional ride. Um, it was my only five star book of March. And this is a book that will stay with me for a very, very 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 long time it covers several decades of the lives of jude willem malcolm and jb um for for friends but jude is the center i would say of all of them and the friends don't know the extent of jude's story they know he has medical problems especially with his legs um and they know that they just don't talk about jude's past um they don't know about his family. They don't know, you know, what happened to his legs. They just know that it's bad. And these friends, especially Willem, are very protective of Jude. And the friendships that they have are strong and beautiful. Uh, Jude's doctor and a former professor are also prominent and important characters. And I just, I feel like I know each one of them. Um, as the story unfolds, we are given glimpses into Jude's past. We understand who he is by learning about his childhood, how he grew up, and the traumas that he experiences. Um, in some ways, it is a slow burn, and the writing is beautiful. I really felt this book deeply. Um, the story is one of great pain. It is about mental illness, the effects of abuse, and coping with unimaginable things. So the coping mechanisms are not the healthiest, um, but it does make one wonder and question what the options are. So getting Jude help is not an easy thing. And the story is also about 
friendship and love and found family. It's about humanity, its strengths and weaknesses, uh, the good and evil. And even though this is over 800 pages, um, the every, 800, every page of the 800 are worth it. This is just an incredible, incredible book. So the next two books are, are books that I read with the Up To No Good book club, which includes Shelley from Shelley Swearingen's Library, um, Sandy from Miss Reads A Lot, Fraser from Fraser Simon's Springboard Thought, and um, three friends, Sonia, Deb, and Angela. And our March book was Bel Canto by Ann Patchett. I have been wanting to read more Anne Patchett, so I was really happy that we would be reading this. Um, the story started off very strong for me, but then kind of fizzled out over time. The setup is excellent. The story takes place in South America. There is a birthday celebration for a prominent businessman being held at the vice president's home. And as people are drinking and visiting and listening to the well-loved opera singer, terrorists attack the home and take everyone hostage. So this, like, it was dramatic and it had this intense beginning. And then the story continues following these characters um, as they deal with the situation of being hostages. And it shows how they adapt, how they build relationships, and like, not just with other hostages but with the terrorists themselves so the concept is really intriguing and I think the story is saying a lot about um, our society and who we are as human beings so I liked the idea of this but probably about halfway through it um, was just it was no longer capturing my attention so I, th I think it's still worth a read and I still want to read more and patch it for sure. Um, and I also wouldn't mind seeing the movie of this. As you can see, this is the movie cover. But um, So this same group uh, read The River by Peter Heller for our April book. And like Bel Canto, this story started off really strong. Uh, two friends, Wynne and Jack, decide to canoe the Masqua River, which is in northern British Columbia. And you all know, I love when a book has, you know, places or things as characters. So I was really hoping that the river would be a character in this. And in some ways it is, but not the way that I had hoped. So I immediately liked these two friends. They were well developed and the sense of adventure and mystery, at least at the beginning, um, I thought was really good. So there's looming danger is kind of foreshadowed and the two men, you know, see a man and a woman arguing and then they seem to disappear and there's also a forest fire and um, then they come across a man that they aren't too sure about. And I thought that these kind of three things could have made for really good suspense. Um, but they all fell short for me. Like the forest fire, I don't think the author has been near a forest fire. Um, just by the way it's um, written, it's, it's pretty much forgotten about. And the couple have intrigue, but that's about it. And when we find out who the man is and what's going on, it was just kind of a, a letdown. So this was an okay read for me, um, but nothing that you know I was too impressed with. Um, and then the final book that I'm going to talk about is a nonfiction book called Missing from the Village, and this is by Justin Ling. This is the story about Bruce MacArthur, MacArthur, who is a serial killer and was targeting men in Toronto's gay village. And he killed eight people before the police finally caught him. And this book tells the story of those eight men, but then also shows how the police handled these cases. And many, if not most of the men, were people that no one no one would really look for. It, so it sounds sad, but some of them were immigrants. They had no family in Canada and were kind of off the radar and off the grid. So this follows um, the proceedings and dead ends that are 
really interesting um, until they finally figure out, you know, what Bruce has been doing with these these men's bodies. Um, I really appreciated this book because I followed this story as it was happening. And I remember the news, you know, the news reports about it. Um, it was such a shocking story. And this book gives some uh, really good inside scoop, I guess, and some more details. So if you enjoy true crime, or if you already know about this case, and um, you kind of want to learn more, then I highly recommend this. There is also a couple of um, episodes in season two of Catching Killers on Netflix that are about Bruce MacArthur. Uh, so if you don't want to read the book, and you would prefer to just watch a documentary, that is something to look for. So on that note, <laughs> these are all of the books that I finished in March. Uh, like I said, not a bad reading month, um, some mediocre stuff, but my five star read was exceptional. So it totally makes up for it. Um, please let me know if you have read any of these books, if you are interested in reading any of these books, and uh, let me know what you read in March that you are excited about and that you would recommend. I would love to hear all about that. As always, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and don't forget to make every day an adventure.